Uh, while we're waiting for the results of the tabulation, let's call on another speaker who is the Public Affairs and Corporate citizen, Citizenship Director of City Foundation in the Philippines, talking about youth economic prospects and expectations as pathways to progress. She has long years of experience in communications, working as City Philippines Public Relations and Communications Head for nine years prior to her post. Please welcome Aneth Lim. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Those are really, really great pitches. Um, and I'm glad that I actually serve as the introduction to this survey that we want to share with you. I'm very honored to speak about Pathways to Progress. This is a global campaign by City Foundation in support of the youth. Now, young people today, thank you, I'm not as tall as Ola. <laughs> young people today make up the largest youth population in history. You actually number 1.2 billion, representing 16% of the world's population. And when we say youth here, we actually define those between the ages of 16 to 24 years old. They have the opportunity to shape the next five decades, or I should say that you have that opportunity. But you also face unprecedented challenges. You need help to overcome these barriers to realize your full potential. For one, your generation faces an unemployment challenge. In all corners of the globe, from developing countries to developed countries, we see persistent youth unemployment, and the number is 13% or higher. What's worst is that the number of employed young people, 156 million, who live in extreme poverty, despite having a job, often can be found in developing countries like the Philippines. If we don't fix this, the consequences will be felt across our cities. That's because we believe the future of our cities around the world are tied to your economic success. When the young people are not successful, their families don't experience success, and their communities suffer as well. And that's why the City Foundation commissioned a survey with Ipsos. Ipsos is a global market research and consulting firm with worldwide headquarters in France. What we did is we asked Ipsos to build on existing research and further study the economic prospects and pursuits of the young people. We wanted to learn about what careers do you want to pursue, the availability of resources that help connect you to employment opportunities, and obstacles that stand in your way. The survey was conducted online between November 2016 and January 2017. We talked to young people ages 18 to 24 in 45 cities across 32 countries around the world. Approximately 150 interviews were conducted in every city, and we went to Asia Pacific, Latin America, Europe, Middle East and Africa, and also in North America. The results in this paper are based on the voices of more than 7,000 young people surveyed. So what did we learn? One is that the young people from large global cities are very optimistic about their future career opportunities, even those in the developing countries. This optimism is grounded in the belief that compared to their parents, they are much better off. They believe that they can get education better today achieve professional goals, and have the opportunities for professional success. And this optimism holds true despite the changing global political and economic landscapes. You have to understand that when we did the survey, we were undergoing intensifying global refugee crisis. We had the Brexit vote in the United Kingdom, and then we had the US presidential elections. Interestingly, we actually see a higher level of optimism in developing countries. 79% of young people in this market believe they will find opportunities to succeed in their preferred career. And this is compared to 64% in developed markets. So the question that we are left is, what do we now do with optimism so that we can best prepare you for economic success? Let's look at the employed youth. For many, there is a mismatch that exists between the jobs they have and their aspirations. Across all regions of the world, the top three professions that young people aspire to work in are number one, technology and science, two, arts and entertainment, and three, professional services. But 
you will note that one in five or 20% of them really desire to work in technology and science, outstripping any other field. And yet if you ask them, where are you working now? 17% are working in sales and retail. Today's youth believe there's a wide range of factors that would help them find a job. And the most cited needs are on the job experience at 48%. This is followed by more professional connections, who you know really counts, and they say that for 41%. And more social connections also help at 35%. These are consistent whether you look at developed and developing markets. Globally, 67% of young people believe that college is necessary to be successful. What's unfortunate is that an even higher number, that 69% believe higher education is beyond their financial means. This inequality is especially acute in cities in developing countries like Sao Paulo, New Delhi, Mumbai, and even here in Manila. So now let's consider the experience gap. Eight in 10 believe that internships or apprenticeships are critical to career success. And this sentiment varies across region. You see a high of 81% in Latin America to a low of 75% in both North America and Europe. However, the majority feel that these opportunities do not exist in their city. Perceived access to apprenticeships is not equally distributed, again, with cities in developing countries at a disadvantage. And I'm sorry to say, again, that includes Manila. So whether you go to Mumbai, Nairobi, Jakarta, Lima, Panama City, and Delhi, if you ask the youth, they'll say, I wish I could be apprenticed, but there's just no opportunity for me. So there is a mismatch between the demand for the opportunities and the supply. Now, this particular answer gave me hope. Um, the entrepreneurial spirit is strong in all of the surveyed cities. 69% of young people dream of starting their own business. And additionally, 70% say that owning their own business is a better path to success than working for someone else. 76% said they're willing to work long hours, and they think it's worth taking risks to achieve their dreams. But then again, I'm sorry, in every survey there's a big but. Only 44% are actually trying to start their business. And we need to help this 44%. What's even worse is that very few at present are actually entrepreneurs. The number is a very low 6%. Lack of education and skills are seen to be key barriers in achieving their dream. So those are the highlights of the survey. And what I wanted to do is to quickly take you through the results for Manila. How did we do? Okay. So when we asked them, when thinking about the economy in your city, do you agree or disagree with this statement? I have many opportunities to succeed in my preferred career. In the developed cities, Los Angeles ranked first with 74%. Among developing cities, you had Jakarta with 93%. For Manila, we weren't very far behind. We actually ranked third with 91%. Now, when it came to the ability to get an education, most young people surveyed believe that they're better off than their parents were at that age in terms of access. You can see here their optimism. In Hong Kong, it's 91%. Nairobi is 97%. Manila's not too far behind, placing sixth with 94%. When it comes to the ability to achieve your professional goals, again, young people in uh, cities in developing countries are actually showing the way. Mumbai is registering at 94%, Manila ranked third with 93%, and you have Cleveland at 84%. They're most likely to feel that the opportunities for professional success are better than their parents. Now here, when it comes to the entrepreneurial gap, do you know who are the biggest employers in this country? It's not the company I represent. So it's not the Citibank, it's also not the Rappler, sorry. It's actually the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Altogether, they provide more employment opportunities for Filipinos than any of the top companies in the country. So if you want to contribute to that success, you should take this path because you will enable not only yours or your families, but also your communities. So you may be thinking, was Manila number one in anything? Well, yes, 
Um, and I think real estate companies would like to hear this. When it comes to the ability to, to afford the home, we were the most optimistic. We ranked first at 89%, and Istanbul was 67% among developed cities. If you want to know more about the survey, I'd like to invite you to visit uh, cityfoundation.com because now that we have the top line results, we actually want to do more. We don't want this data to just sit there and not turn into information that will be useful. What we're actually left with when you look at Pathways to Progress is a portrait of incredible optimism and potential among the young people. And we can see also that there are a lot of gaps for them to realize their potential. What's actually very sad is when you look at the trends today, real incomes and economic security are decreasing or stalling throughout most cities. Your generation is experiencing far less economic growth than any prior generation. That's a challenge and a barrier that you need to actually overcome. So what do we do now? Um, well, this is what City in a small way is doing. We see the pressing need and it actually in February of this year, we announced an expanded three-year commitment to invest 100 million across the globe so that we can offer 500,000 young people with better employability skills. We're helping with entrepreneurship training, with mentorship, leadership development, and most critical is actually opening the opportunity for the young to get their first job. That really spells economic success and tests them on the right path. What we're doing is we're testing, we're scaling, and we're replicating proven solutions. And we're also taking our learnings from the United States and applying it globally where appropriate. We face a rapidly changing and complex economic and social environment. And we're taking the results of this survey to help guide us in our approach as we invest in our future leaders. That's you. And we hope that you will also take the same insights and use it to guide your future. Thank you.